Hi, my name is Don Erdbrink. I'm the founder uh, and chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Granite State Arts Academy, uh, a school that we started so that we could have a arts-focused high school in New Hampshire, which also had strong academic credentials uh, with a lot of rigor for the students. Um, today, we'd like to present some of the curriculum and let you meet some of our teachers. Um, but for now, I'd like to start with uh, our head of school, Mr. Anthony Polito. Hello, hello everybody, uh, and hope everybody is home and safe. Uh, I'm going to mention about six things that are important, uh, and then I'll pass it on. Um, stay on the video through its entirety, because at the very end, there'll be a tutorial on how to register for your courses. And make sure you also wait to hear from Mrs. Karen, our guidance counselor next year's head of school, about information that's critical to your planning. Um, also, make sure that you listen to your teachers, and if you have any questions about anything or concerns, feel free to email them, or particularly during a Zoom session class, ask them about it. Also, please read the course description booklet, which is online. A lot of the questions are answered on that booklet. And if you're a sophomore or a junior, please have some idea about your future plans as you select your courses, and that means you need to talk to your parents get their advice on what you're gonna be doing, and even you may wanna get their approval before you sign up for things. If you're unsure, again, feel free to ask us any questions at any time. So I'm now gonna throw this to Mrs. Karen, who is a guidance counselor, and she is going to be our head of school next year. Hi, I'm Mrs. Karen, and I'm your guidance counselor, and I will be the one person that will be helping your child um, throughout the four years of school. Um, we um, go by the state standards, obviously, that New Hampshire has to offer, and um, we will have to have your student have four years of English, uh, three years at least of math, um, three years of social studies, and in your booklet, they're all highlighted in there. One and a half years of health, as you can see now it's up. Um, art, six credits over the course of your four years, four years of English credits, three years of math, three years of social studies, at least two years of science, one and a half years of wellness, and then your extra electives to equal a total of 26 credits. Um, it's important to kind of plan out each year what your student is gonna be taking, whether they're a freshman, a sophomore, a junior, or a senior. Obviously, you're going to have a lot more required classes as a freshman than you would as a junior or senior. And I'd be working with each student and their families each year to plan out what those classes are going to be. But before we can actually do that, we're going to have to um, uh, introduce some of the teachers and have you listen to what they have to offer so that you can kind of put a name with a face with each subject. So first up is Miss Peterson for English. Hi, I'm Miss Peterson and I teach the upper level English here at Granite State Arts Academy. Um, English 11 focuses on American literature like Great Gatsby and the autobiography of Martin Luther King Jr. And I have a junior's honor uh, seminar that I started running this year and each uh, quarter is labeled by one book, one project, one essay. This year we did Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale. Um, for senior English, we balance nonfiction and fiction. So this year we did the Joy Luck Club, um, and also Into Thin Air by John Krakauer. Um, there is also a senior English class that is a dual enrollment class with NHTI up in Concord, and students in that class receive one credit of English for their freshman year of college and their senior English credit at the same time. The program is $150 and runs for the entirety of the year. I also um, started teaching a class called Myths and Legends this year, which focuses on early mythology and also legends, American and uh, British, and urban legends as well. And the final project will be students will write their own urban legend. I run a sociology class where they do a big APA style serial killer paper. Um, I also am the advisor for the GSA club at my school. Um, and now I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. McGarry. Hi folks, I'm Mr. McGarry. I teach ninth and 10th grade English at uh, GSAA. So um, English line is genres of literature and composition. That's all about understanding, breaking 
right use and figuring out how to apply those tools to your own writing. So we'll be looking at fiction, nonfiction, poetry, short stories, and plays. We've got a couple of really fun books there. We'll be looking at The Book Thief and To Kill a Mockingbird. And at this time, we'll be taking a look at um, And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie, because it's a mystery novel, and she's uh, very, very knowledgeable at genre writing. Um, English 10 is world literature, uh, and our focus in world literature is different forms of story changing language. Um, there's also more of an emphasis on presentations and visual art in uh, world literature, so we're trying to tie in other aspects of the arts curriculum into English there. Uh, so we'll be taking a look at Siddhartha, we'll be looking at Night by Ali Weissel, and we'll be finishing the year by looking at a little bit of old English uh, in the world. Also teach a couple of electives. Uh, I teach historical literature, which is a course where we explore uh, different portrayals of societies through naval metaphors. A lot of students call it a book of boats because we look at boats a lot. So we'll be reading Heart of Darkness, um, Benito Sereno, and my personal favorite, Moby Dick. I uh, will be tying the arts into our reading of that as well. We will also be looking at episodes of Star Trek uh, and seeing how this story about spaceships in the future uh, talks about society in the same way that Moby Dick talks about society in the 1850s. Um, we will also be introducing a new course, uh, British Literature, uh, which is also going to be an NHTI uh, certified course. So you should get, I, I, we're still planning this, but you, you should be getting a half credit college credit for uh, British Literature. We'll be looking at the Canterbury Tales, Every Man, uh, and we'll be finishing that with uh, Gulliver's, Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift. One other new course I'm introducing this year is Comics Media, uh, which is going to be an English class around uh, analyzing graphic novels and other forms of comics. We'll be looking at the ways that comics have established themselves as literature and how comics can do things that other forms of literature cannot do. And to do that, we'll be looking at a couple of uh, literary comics like Mouse by Art Spiegelman. We'll also be looking at Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud, which kind of set out a lot of the different uh, techniques the comic artists use to create meaning. Uh, and we'll be ending that, uh, that semester by making our own short comics using some of these techniques. Uh, finally, I just want to very quickly talk about Yearbook and the Robotics Club. Uh, Yearbook is a course. It also it's going to be a course in the second semester, and it's also going to be a little bit of a club in the first semester. So if you're in yearbook second semester, you'll also be taking pictures from me through, throughout the year, and then in that second half of the year, we'll be assembling that into a fantastic yearbook. Um, finally, I run the Robotics Club. Uh, we actually went to States this year, even though this was our first year, uh, and I'm very, very excited to see what we do with that next year. Uh, absolutely no barrier to entry here. I knew almost nothing about robotics when I started, so please come and try out the Robotics Club at GSAA as well. Thank you. Uh, and now I would like to throw to Mr. Davis in the math department. Hi, my name is Rich Davis. I am the lead teacher in the math department. Um, we offer the same following traditional math courses, pre-algebra, algebra, geometry, algebra 2, and pre-calculus. Um, other than integrating the arts into our courses, the courses are taught in a traditional method and follow the New Hampshire state standards. We also offer consumer math. We primarily cover the curriculum of Dave Ramsey's Foundations in Personal Finance. Um, we cover such topics as personal finance, savings, budgeting, um, debt, life after high school, consumer awareness, investing, and retirement and insurance, careers, and taxes. Um, and that's it. I'd like to pass it on to Mr. Dutton of the Science Department. Hello. Uh, so I'm uh, Andrew Dutton. I teach the science classes at Granite State Arts Academy. Um, we teach the, you know, intro level to uh, science, which is sort of a general science class. If you've ever wondered how anything works in the world, uh, why it works, how the video that you're watching works, right? So we explain those sorts of things uh, in the freshman science class, uh, like an integrated or what is typically referred to as a physical sciences course. Um, we also have biology, which is the next class after that, um, and uh, follows this sort of standard pattern of uh, textbook biology classes. 
And then there is a chemistry class, um, which most people that are trying to go on to uh, colleges will take as many colleges will require three years of science classes in high school. Um, at, being at an art school, uh, these are heavily integrated with arts, right? So explaining, you know, does yellow and blue mix together make green? Or is that actually a trick in your eye? Um, and explaining the physiology of how you see those colors uh, is a part of biology, right? So most of the labs, there's typically a format as a lab roughly every other week or every week, depending upon uh, the subject and where we are in the subject. And many of those will incorporate the um, techniques and things that are utilized in your other arts classes, right? You know, how do you tell the difference um, if for the music students, right? You hit middle C, you can play middle C on any instrument, but you, inst you instantly can tell the difference between a guitar playing uh, that same note versus a piano, right? So we can explain what that is, which is the harmonics, et cetera, um, as to why you can explain uh, and use science in all of these different subjects. Uh, so with that, um, I will be uh, passing you over to uh, Mr. Mojo, uh, teaching our social studies. Hi, uh, I'm Mr. Mojkowski. Uh, I teach the social studies um, classes. Uh, basically, you need uh, three credits in social studies. Um, these are your three credits. Uh, I teach, let's see, United States history. Um, that's a full year class. Um, it's the only one of the, um, the social studies that is a full year class. Um, and it obviously goes from revolution to current day. I also bring in a lot of current events. If you're going to, you know, do well in my class, you're going to have to be able to watch the news and, and, uh, you know, compare, you know, what's going on now versus what's going on then. So that's kind of an important thing. All right. Um, also, in uh, freshman year, I teach um, geography uh, and world history. I mean, obviously, not just geography, we're not just studying maps, but we're studying how to study geography and you know, the, the five themes that go along with that. Uh, that same year, freshman year, we, you'll take a, a world history class. Um, I try to pick it up it's a, it's a survey, so we, we cover a great deal of time in, in, a, in a short amount of time. And, uh, you know, we go from, you know, early man to roughly to the, uh, the Reformation. Um, the following year, sophomore year, I uh, will have a civics class, which is um, obviously all about the United States government, but we also talk about uh, New Hampshire state government, the New Hampshire state constitution, and that sort of thing. Um, the second half of that year is economics, uh, where we'll talk about, again, how economic systems work. Uh, and then towards, you know, after we've covered uh, most of the, the basics on economics, we'll bring in personal economics and things like that. Uh, again, do how to do your taxes and why you're doing your taxes. Um, let's see. Okay, so those are the, um, the three credits you need in social studies. Um, so uh, I look forward to seeing you or meeting you, and I pass it on to uh, Mrs. Callahan. Hola a todos y bienvenidos a nuestra escuela. Mi nombre es la señora Callahan y yo enseño español uno, dos y tres. Hello to everyone and welcome to our school. My name is Mrs. Callahan and I teach Spanish 1, 2, and 3. Uh, in the Spanish courses here at GSAA, you can expect to have a lot of fun learning the Spanish language. Uh, you'll not only learn the language, but you'll also learn all of the Spanish-speaking countries and a lot about their cultures and, his, and holidays. Uh, dance, theater, music, visual arts, and creative writing are a big part of our school and they're infused into the Spanish curriculum. So get ready to make clay sculptures, calaveras and ataudes, uh, paint on canvas, pinta pinturas, and make paper marigolds, uh, sempasuchil de papel. 
you'll learn how to tango and cha-cha, just to name a couple of the dances you'll learn when we partner up with our dance department. You'll learn many popular holiday songs, Biancicos in Spanish, along with many others from artists like Mark Anthony and his Vivir Mi Vida, my personal favorite, uh, to songs for curriculum pieces like Weather, Time, and Dia de los Muertos. Something that's really special for the Spanish courses is that we end our school year with the students doing a performance piece in each course. So for example, Spanish One uh, makes commercials and we have so much fun um, doing that as our final. Uh, Spanish Two will create and film a uh, travel agency advertisement for various Spanish speaking countries. And Spanish 3 creates a performance piece. And this is including writing a full script and then performing it and then filming it. Um, it's no easy feat as we start at the beginning of the school year. In the past, they've created pieces like murder mysteries and soap operas, telenovas. Uh, the entire process is so much fun, and it's amazing how much of the Spanish language uh, the students learn and acquire year to year to year. Uh, in closing, I hope to see you all in August. Nos vemos en agosto. Uh, adios. And then I guess I will introduce myself for <laughs> PE. Um, you may be asking yourself uh, what PE is like at GSAA. I'm sure, you, uh, sure when you watch the virtual tour, you may have noticed there's no gymnasium in our school building. Uh, we don't have a gym, but that doesn't affect us in any way, shape, or form. We use our cafeteria, the front lawn outside, um, the pavement down to the main road, and sometimes the classroom and in years past, the theater too. Uh, PE consists of a warm up and stretch routine, and then we move on to our activity of the day, week, or weeks. Depending on what unit we're doing, the time can vary. Uh, you can expect, expect to play hockey. Because we're indoors, uh, we work with inflatables for our hockey matches. So we get very creative in our sports. Uh, believe it or not, it takes more effort and energy when working with the inflatables than a regular game of street hockey. Uh, we also play soccer, ultimate frisbee, kickball, flag football, badminton, table tennis. We do lightweight training, practice yoga, mile walking, learn fencing techniques, wiffle ball, baseball, volleyball, um, I even do a martial arts taekwondo unit with you at the end of the school year in the PE course. Uh, we, we even work on topics like what counts as physical activities and uh, barriers to physical activities and ways to overcome them. So you can see you have a wonderful opportunity to try out different types of physical activities. You get a lot of exposure in the PE course, and the hope is that you find something you like and connect with, and maybe it becomes your personal physical activity of choice And um, when you're finished the course. Uh, because remember, teens are supposed to get 60 minutes of physical activity a day. Uh, in the PE course, the daily PE grade is comprised of participation, movement, conduct and safety, and preparation. Um, I can't wait to play and train with you. Um, yes, play. I've been known to jump in and play with you from time to time if we have uneven numbers. So uh, looking forward to uh, training with you in the fall. And then I guess I should introduce myself again for the health course. Excuse me. <laughs> um, I like to say to everyone, uh, the health course at GSAA is not your typical health course. Uh, where else can you do a fingerprint cartoon strip to demonstrate refusal skills? Or how about a mock jury trial for drunk driving? Or a drunk driving simulation activity? How about veggie art during nutrition? Or making your own homemade deodorant for a personal care unit? 
those are just a few of my favorite examples of how Artsy the health course is. Um, you can expect to add to your current knowledge of vaping, um, the health triangle, tobacco, alcohol, um, taking someone's keys, prescription drugs, club drugs, street drugs, dependence versus addiction, marijuana, sex ed, HIV, quitting substances, violence prevention, mental and emotional health, nutrition, and personal care. Uh, there's a very strong emphasis on the health skills, and you'll learn various models for decision making and refusal skills. You'll sharpen your interpersonal communication abilities, as well as self-advocacy and awareness to health advocacy for others. You'll gain strategies for keeping yourself risk-free and having healthy behavioral outcomes in any situation and your day-to-day. -day. Um, I always say to my health students that high school health is a blip on the radar screen. But what I love about that is you get this moment in time um, to take an introspective look at how healthy you are and how you can improve um, your overall health and wellness, as well as develop uh, lifelong skills. So I look forward to working with you on your health. And now I turn it over to Mrs. McMahon, our dance teacher. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Callahan. Hello, everyone. I'm Mrs. McMahon, and I'm the dance instructor at Granite State Arts Academy. So we offer the introductory through advanced levels of dance here and you don't have to have any um, prior knowledge of dance to enter the intro level. Um, you just have to have a willingness to come and learn. So during the week we do ballet twice a week, jazz once a week, modern once a week, and there's also some student choreography. Um, if you're in any of those classes, you will be in a performance at the end of the semester where many of the pieces are student choreographed because that's a big part of the program. We also have classes um, like dance history, where we'll be talking about dance in prehistoric times all the way through current times and what dance is like in the world today. Uh, we have world dance where you study the culture of dances of different cultures and then you actually learn how to perform some of those dances and that would be in the showcase at the end of the semester. That's a very popular class. And uh, we also offer dance pedagogy, which is if you are interested in being a dance teacher, it's a stepping stone on your way to get there on injury prevention, um, how to teach a dance class and various things like that. Um, it's, a, it's a very cool program. We have a lot of fun. We work hard and we're very creative. I am also the advisor to the NHSDA. That's the National Honor Society for Dance Arts where you can become a member of that and get inducted by the time you're a senior. And I am also the advisor to the NHS, so the National Honor Society. So if you need any information on that, I would be the person to go to. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you and I'm going to now send you over to Mr. Hudgens from the music program. Hi folks, how you doing? I'm uh, Mr. Hudgens, you're a friendly neighborhood music teacher. And uh, we have a bunch of really exciting courses for next year uh, for students of all experience levels from beginners to uh, students who plan on making a career out of music. Um, our flagship ensembles are the, uh, the chorus and the instrumental ensemble. And in both of those groups, uh, students will be learning about and performing all sorts of music, popular music, uh, jazz, um, art music, um, both traditional and contemporary. Uh, we try and cover a large variety of genres and uh, program music that we can talk about. Uh, music that has um, cultural importance, societal importance, things that kind of uh, translate to your lives beyond the classroom. Um, for students who are enrolled in either of those ensembles, we also offer a rock ensemble. Um, which is more focused on um, smaller student-led groups and it's a good chance for students to practice their um, their kind of ensemble skills in a smaller more tightly developed setting um, and also to learn about things like live sound um, arranging music and uh, self-sufficiency in music um, we're offering a music theory track 
um, which is a two semester program, Music Theory 1 and Music Theory 2, um, where you learn all about kind of the inner workings of music um, from the very basics of how one note relates to another note, um, all the way up through large form scale and analysis. Um, we'll be investigating all sorts of music through that, right? Classical music, jazz music, popular music. Um, music theory is really something that can separate a, um, an amateur musician from a really successful um, musician that can make a career out of it. So it's tremendously important and I'm really excited to see it uh, have a year long slot in our um, curriculum. Uh, additionally, we're offering an intro to music course uh, for people who have little to no formal uh, musical training where we'll talk about things like um, basic music reading skills, um, basic singing techniques, uh, introductory instrumental techniques, and um, some music listening techniques as well, ways that you can um, train your ears so that you can be a more informed and um, well-educated listener. Um, we offer a songwriting course um, for beginner and experienced songwriters alike where we'll be investigating uh, some of the great songwriters of uh, the past century, um, learning about musical and lyrical techniques, and of course, writing tons of songs. Uh, we have an ear training course, which is kind of a blend of music theory, um, performance, and um, music listening, where you'll take uh, pre-existing recordings and learn how to um, translate that directly to your instrument. Uh, you will no longer be the person looking up guitar tabs online. You will be the person writing the guitar tabs online. And uh, finally, we offer um, an audio course where you'll learn all about music production, uh, recording techniques, um, podcasting techniques. Uh, and for our advanced students, we offer an audio two course as well, which uh, allows for more individual and specialized projects. Um, I'm really excited about the year we have planned. There's so many cool things. I look forward to seeing a lot of you there in class. Uh, finally, it is my pleasure to introduce our theater teacher, Mrs. Lyons. Hi, everybody. My name is Mara Lyons. I'm the theater teacher here at GSAA. I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, the courses that I teach and a little bit about your after school options here as well for the theater arts program. So first we have our intro to theater course, which is great for freshmen or anybody who's a beginning beginner actor just new to theater and you want to see what it's all about. That course gives a little bit of every other class that we offer here at GSAA. So it's a great way to get started and get your foot in the door. After that, as a prerequisite, um, you can take the advanced workshop class where we dive into more technical methods of acting and then we work with more difficult texts and analyzing character um, and development with the plot and things like that and how it relates to creating um, a performance. For all of our visual artists, we offer a theater design class. We cover costume design, set design, prop design, and then amongst all of that, we look at exploring styles from different time periods. Um, after that, if you are interested in history, we do offer a historical theater class where we study artistic movements um, and why they're happening because of what is happening globally, um, politically, and socially around the world at that time. And then we read and act out plays from each of those time periods so we can understand the style. And that's a great class for anybody who has done theater or hasn't done theater. If you just like history or if you like to read, um, that's a great class to take. For those students who love musicals, we have a class called the American Musical. And we read and watch musicals from their development here during the American Revolution all the way up till today. And we do cover um, the past winners of the Tony Awards as well. And we also sing and dance in that class so we can own all of our skills while understanding how popular music shaped this genre to make it a truly uh, American style that we, we can be really proud of. 
Beginning next year, we also have an improv workshop class where students can build their improvisation skills and their critical um, and creative thinking skills. So this is also open to anybody. So if you have done theater, if you haven't before, this is a great one if you want to improve your public speaking, um, spontaneous thinking, um, even your physicality. We'll do all of that with voice and movement in that improv workshop class. In addition, to all of our course offerings, um, we also have the After School Club, which is the Theatrical Society, and that produces two to three shows a year and is open to all students, regardless if you take the theater classes um, offered in the course catalog. And we perform a musical, a play, and a competition one act throughout the year. So we are involved in the New Hampshire Educational Theater Guild festivals, where we do compete with the other um, schools in the area once a year. Um, all of our classes and our shows take place in our own black box theater um, and that comes complete with our own lighting grid and sound system which are available to students uh, to learn through our theatrical society. So all of our crew is manned by students. So if you're interested in stage management, uh, proper costume creation, set design, um, sound or lighting design, like I mentioned, um, that's a great uh, way to get involved, even if you're not somebody who likes to be on stage and act. Um, I think there's something for everybody in our theater program, so whether you like to be on stage or behind the scenes, I hope you come and check it out, and I look forward to acting with you as soon as possible. You've heard a little bit about our uh, performing arts, now we are going to go to Mr. Charlo, who was our visual arts teacher. Hello everybody, I'm Frank Charlo. I'm the visual arts teacher. Um, all the courses I'm going to talk about are semester long courses. Some of those are 45 minute long blocks, some are 90 minutes. The first class is Fundamentals of Art. This is the starting point for our incoming freshmen. Uh, this class focuses on an introduction to as many art making methods and materials as we can cover. And these are, these techniques are built on a, with, in later classes. Uh, this course is also prerequisite to all the other visual arts courses. Advanced Studio Personal Voice. This class is where students have the opportunity to gain experience working in the media that they want to explore. Uh, the entire class works on a single theme, but individual students can choose the medium that they would like to work in for that theme. Drawing and Painting. Uh, this course is an in-depth course for students who want to just focus on drawing and painting and they are able to hone their skills in, in those two mediums. Uh, on the 3D side of art, um, we have Ceramics 1 and Ceramics 2. Ceramics 1 teaches hand building techniques, pinch, coil, and slab. Um, and in this class, students build utilitarian pieces as well as sculptural pieces. And then Ceramics 2 introduces throwing on the wheel. We also have Introduction to Sculpture. And this is where students learn to make 3D pieces using a variety of different materials. And the focus in this class is how to not only build the sculptures, but how to present them and so that they're successful art pieces. Um, additionally, we have an art history course. And this course is a survey of art from 1900 to present day. And the course focuses on the historical and cultural influences on modern art and then the impact that various art movements have on contemporary artists today. Um, a new course that I'm adding for next year that I'm very excited about is digital art. And this course builds on all the principles covered in other courses with traditional art making and then transfers those skills into the digital world. Um, there's also a component of exploring career opportunities for digital artists in that class. Um, independent art is a class that's intended for our seniors um, who have really exhausted all the other visual arts courses and it gives the, those students studio time to explore their own art and to hone their skills in preparation for college or career opportunities. Uh, it's a very self-driven class and students are approved on a one-on-one -on -one basis for this and which brings me to AP art our advanced placement course and this is a curriculum that's approved by the college board and students with advanced skills are chosen for this class on an individual basis. And you gain college credit as well as high school credit for this class. And there is a final portfolio review for this class done by the college board, which 
there is a small fee for the student for this. And then lastly, I have portfolio design. And this class helps students build a, both a traditional and a digital uh, portfolio. And it's intended for students who are looking at applying for colleges. And it's also got a, a large component of um, looking for art careers and what's available for visual artists. Um, so now I'm going to pass the baton over to Mrs. Trout. Hi, I'm Paula Trout. I teach Introduction to Sewing, where you learn the basics of using a sewing machine, threading machine, winding a bobbin, and so on. We learn about reading patterns and all sorts of other things. Um, next year, we're also introducing Advanced Sewing, which will build on what you learn in the first course and have more complex patterns that we work with. I'm also introducing a garment construction course where we learn how to take measurements and fit patterns properly to people for clothing. And I'm introducing an introduction to digital photography course where you're going to learn how to use a DSLR camera, which the classroom will be providing. You'll learn how to use aperture, shutter speed, and ISO to create a balanced exposure and visual compositions. And it should be really fun. I'm going to hand this back to Mrs. Karen for talking about special education now. Hello, I'm back. Um, so anyone that has um, 504s or IEPs will be connect, um, contacted towards the end of the year or the beginning of next year. Um, we have multiple meetings with the districts to talk about um, students' needs, and then we kind of wrap it into what we have here at Granite State Arts Academy and work with, through the teachers, the parents, the students, um, in the districts to get the needs fulfilled. Um, Mrs. Moon would be the person that would be contacting you all, reaching out about your 504s and IEPs. I recommend if you don't have any of those on file with us to make sure that um, you reach out to Mrs. Moon and she will make sure that that happens. Um, so you've heard a lot about our courses that we have here offered at Granite State Arts Academy. Lots and lots and lots and lots of courses um, that your student can be involved in, whether it's theater, dance, music, arts, English. We try to service you guys so that you guys can take multiple courses in all the classes. Um, now we're gonna go into what the course selection sheet looks like because it looks a little different this year and I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Rainia Friend and she will um, go through the course selection sheet. Hi, I am a Rainy Friend. I am someone that will help you with any technology needs and um, you will probably speak with me a lot regarding technology in the building, paperwork, or other things like that. So right now I'm going to share my screen. Just give me a moment and I'm going to show you what this course selection sheet looks like. So we have done a Google form. Uh, this is the first time we're doing a digital uh, course selection sheet. And when you get the link, you'll just click on it. It'll take you immediately to this form. And it's pretty basic. It's gonna give you some instruction here at the top and it's gonna give you Miss Karen's email in case you have questions about the course selection sheet. Um, anything that has a little red star uh, is a required uh, question. You won't be able to move on until you've answered that question. So we're definitely gonna need your name or we don't know whose um, classes to, to give these to. Um, it's gonna tell you your required courses. Those are courses you do not have to select. We've already given them to you. And then it's gonna break down your math, uh, your PE, your um, health classes. If you're looking for a world language, foreign language, we offer Spanish for the, we're looking at the freshman course selection. Um, we also have an option for you to choose up to five arts credits, so you'll be able to then choose whichever your passion is. If you are a dancer, visual artist, musician, or an actor, you'll be able to pick the courses you're most interested in. These are not required, so maybe you don't dance, but you're definitely into music and theater, you, you wouldn't be required to pick dance. So you can check more than one. Uh, if you are a dancer, you can say, oh, I wanna do introduction to dance. You can click on that. No, you can't click on that here, but, um, and, you, and you wanna do intermediate dance or dance history. So you can definitely select more than one class per course. 
until you get through all of them. You'll be able to, to do that for music, photography, sewing, theater, visual arts courses. Um, another thing we have is electives in the humanities department. So you can either um, add creative writing, historical literature, mythology, psychology, yearbook. So those are some of the uh, things that you'll see on your course selection sheet. And then something that we are doing this year so that we know what's most important to you is we've created a preference order. So if dance is your number one choice, you, you would make sure that you selected, you know, your first choice. Uh, all the way down into the very last choice so that we can try to schedule you in the classes you want most, um, assuming availability is there for you. Um, that is basically our form in a nutshell. And then after you're done, you'll hit submit and it'll come to us and we will do the rest of the work. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I am going to give this over to Mr. Erdbrink, our founder and chairman of the board, for some final remarks. Yes, hi. Um, I want to come back to me uh, so I can say thank you for listening and, uh, and paying attention through this uh, presentation. Uh, now that you've met the staff, I want to say that I couldn't be more pleased with our staff. They're very caring people. Uh, they, they love their students. And Granite State Arts Academy being a small school, you as a student will get very, very uh, close attention. Our class sizes are small. It's a very warm and welcoming place to be, a very safe place to be. Um, you get to uh, indulge in the art work, the art uh, form of your choice and explore others that maybe you didn't know you liked. Um, some of the students that have attended Granite State Arts Academy came in with very little art experience and at the end of their four years they were, uh, they were in plays and they were singing in the choir and doing other things. So we're very glad you're interested in coming. We can't wait to meet you. Um, thank you again for uh, uh, watching this and um, enjoy, be safe, um, and we hope to see you very soon in August and early September.